yourself. Help yourself to anything you want. <laughs> oh, very original of you having this in your home, Louise. But aren't you a bit afraid? Afraid? What boy, whatever of? Well, this is not Nevada, you know. And isn't this type of indoor sport rather against the law in New York? Oh, well, that's what makes it so exciting, don't you think? Besides, it is for charity, the orphan's home. So have lots of fun and lose lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Thornton, it's fine. Everything is just fine. Well, I'm glad you think so, Mrs. Thornton. Oh, I do. People are losing money all over the place. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that exactly, though uh, a slight percentage always favors the house, about uh, 2%. Ah. Actually, I thought you'd bring in a lot more of your friends to play. After bringing in all the equipment and the dealers and so forth, I, uh, well, I expected more play, frankly. After all, charity. Well, I'll have a lot more tomorrow. You see, I had to be rather careful about urging people. After all, it is illegal. <laughs> and we can't let the bulls get wise, can we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, heavens no. Oh, heavens no. Oh, excuse me. Oh, dear, he's winning a lot of money. An awful lot he can't seem to lose. Six with a pair and nobody there. The point is eight. How are you, Mrs. Ford? It's a great little party. Eight, the point. <laughs> How do you like that, honey, huh? Well, it's all right, I Four guess. Four straight passes. Coming out on the line. Coming out. Uh, Richie, don't you think you're winning a little too much? I mean, well, think of the orphans. Well, I am, Mrs. Forbes. After all, I'm an orphan myself. <laughs> Sweet boy. And I'm the orphan I'm thinking of. Let's have him. I let her ride. It's all right with the house. Richie, take some off. There must be $4,000 there at least. Oh. That's all right, honey. Richie, please. Look, let me handle it my way, will you? Let it ride. Coming out on the line. Seven a point. Ah, uh, nine. I'll put it on nine, huh? Uh, seven wouldn't do him any good now, would it? No, he has to make a nine. If he makes a seven, he'll lose. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> How about those combats there? Seven craps on the field. Eleven. Pay to come. All right, now blow on him, honey. That's nine he wants. Nine down the line. Nine, the point. Oh, Pay the line. <laughs> Uh, Margaret, dear, I think this young man should know that winning too much at games is just as bad as losing too much. Well, it's, it's a little vulgar, and it could lead to gambling. The dice are still yours, sir. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not going to stretch my luck any further. You're not leaving, Richie. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't lose, Mrs. Forbes. You, um... Uh... You can give this to the other orphan. Oh, but you will come back tomorrow night. Our Take a Chance for Charity Benefit will go on until Friday night. Well, I'll see if we can make it. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night children. I'll be ready as soon as I get my wrap. All right. Well, number 42, please. Well, I saw you were leaving. I couldn't let you get away without saying good night. Uh, good night. Mm. You did pretty well. <laughs> yes, yes, pretty well. Ten thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars. Minus withholding tax. Minus eighty one hundred dollars. You can call that a tax for your social security, which I'll collect right now if you don't mind. <laughs> but I do mind. This is hardly the time or place for uh, anything like that. I think it is. Now, what would Mrs. Forbes think? If she saw one of her guests paying 75% of his winnings to the man who's supposed to be running her games for her. Blackmail, huh? What would the other guests think? Ready? Well, surely, dear. Well, we'll see you tomorrow night, I suppose. Well, his luck can't last forever. He doesn't seem to think so. Good night, Thornton. Good night. Good night. This is your last chance, honey. Well, we can still go out and have another nightcap. How many nightcaps do we need? Well, the more the merrier. This has been a great night for me. Ten thousand dollars richer and happy as a lark. Maggie. No, Richie. Oh, let me come in for a minute, huh? Good night, Richie. Oh. Hey. Call that a kiss? Look, it's late and I have to get up and go to work in the morning. <laughs> Poor little working girl. 
Hey, look. Look here. See these? They brought me great luck this evening. Maybe they'll work again, huh? Hey, now, now let me in. I, I want to see my point. Snake eye. <laughs> let me get my dice, will you? Tomorrow, Richie. I'll give them to you tomorrow. Oh, now, Maggie. Tomorrow, Richie. Honey. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Open the door. Maggie. behind you. Look down. There's more flight down. You wouldn't wait for the elevator. Decided to use the stairs. You stumbled. Too bad. You were a nice kid. Let me go. You've got something that belongs to us. I'll give it to you. I was going to give it to you. He wants to use the elevator. I, I was going to give it to you. I knew you were. I wasn't sure you did. Let's go, Buster. Push the down button, Charlie. That'll be a pleasure. Nine. Let me try it. Eight this time. Twenty-two rolls, and more than half of them came up eight or nine. They did the same thing last night. Let's try something. These dice seem to be talented. Let's see if they can swim. Watch. Four. Now, if they've been gimmicked, the same point will turn face up. Four again. That proves it. Loaded like Grandpappy's musket. But they're transparent. I didn't think they could be. Not with weights. With paint. Paint? Where? The point's on the opposite side have been painted with zig paint. They've been shaped, too. And rounded off on two edges. Then they'll roll over easily. Not every time, but often enough to make it profitable. Well, I knew Richie needed money, but I'd never believed it. Well, he won $10,000 last night alone. Not one. Stole. How'd you happen to get mixed up with him? No romance, if that's what you mean. His uncle and my dad are old friends. I just can't believe that Richie would be a cheater. It looks like he's also a shill. You mean he's working for Thornton? Nobody rings in passes on a professional gambler. Any good dealer would immediately have him thrown out of the game, along with the man who brought them in, unless he was expecting them. Well... I can't say I'm glad to hear this, Mr. Barnett, but thank you, and... Well, you can send me a bill for whatever you think it should be. Is that all you wanted? I could have smelled these on the phone. Don't you want to break this thing up? Oh, indeed I do, but how? Well, if I go to the newspapers or the police, a lot of good people are going to get hurt. People who only gamble because they thought they'd be helping some poor kids in the orphanage. Ridicule and scandal won't get their money back. Mm, but it'd sure make them think. But a lot of them are my friends. They only went to these parties because I urged them. I feel responsible. If there were only something that I could... Excuse me. Miss McLean. Oh, yes, Richie. Yes, I'm fine. Uh, yes, I still have them. Say so you left them home. Oh, no, I left them at home. Try and get him to take you again tonight. Yes, that's right. I did say so, didn't I? All right, Richie, I'll be ready. Nine o'clock. Goodbye. Good. He'll take you to the party and I'll take his dice. But what are you going to do? I'm going to help you break up Mrs. Forbes' Park Avenue crap game. Not with publicity. If it works, Mrs. Forbes will never know it even. <laughs> but what do you need the dice for? I know a little place where they teach dice to talk. And these still have something to say. I'm really interested in dice. Well, why didn't you... A sportsman! Well, I should have known it with that beautiful conservative tie you're wearing. Hey, you are. How's that? Huh? <laughs> uh, take your pick. Any size, any color, but all the same shape. Absolutely square. How do I know? I know because I make them with my own two little hands. No, actually, pal, I'm interested in percentage dice. Percentage work, eh? For magic tricks? 
for demonstrations exposing the folly of gambling, of course. Of course. <laughs> well, don't go away. Got just what you <laughs> There you are, sir. These are the best busters east of Shy. Inside work is what you want? Well, here's passers, missiles, taps, and floats. And for outside work, we have shapes, caps, slicks, and rollers. Just you name it. This stuff get by? Get by? Why, all the best layouts in the country use my dice. But you make these. Ah, shapes, eh? Color, too. Well, feel like my work. Where'd you get them? A friend of mine. He got them from a fellow named Thornton. Ever hear of him? Did you ever hear of Las Vegas? Never heard of it. Well, Thornton ran the hoodoo club there. Ran it into a cool couple of million. Where's Thornton now? Well, that I wouldn't know. But, uh, supposing I was to, uh, see him, who would I say was asking for him? Well, he wouldn't know me. Oh. Well, <laughs> Take your pick, Mac. Take your pick. Now, here's a beautiful pair. Miss outs. Defies the eyes, defeats detection. And I'll guarantee you, if, if that don't roll a natural on every come out roll, they'll turn right around and apologize. <laughs> sure thing, huh? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, pal. Well, that's all right. Think nothing of it. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just take a look around town and see what kind of action's going. And I'll come back here and get the best kind of work for it. Well, of course, any time. Come right in. We're open Thursday night to take care of the late shoppers. Yes, sir. Hey, what's that for? That's for your trouble. Oh, thanks, but you didn't have to do that. <laughs> Be seeing you. Is that you, Mr. Thornton? This is Malco. Yeah. I thought there was something you ought to know. Yeah, there was a fellow in here just now, and uh, he was very curious about some work I'd done for you. Yeah, I think I know him. Just a minute. I'll look at him. Yeah. Just as I thought. Yeah. I made his face all right. He's, uh... Mike Barnett, huh? Thanks for the office, Malco. We'll be waiting for him. Remember our little conversation in the elevator last night, Richie? When you, uh, agreed to come back to work for us? Yes. You remember I told you to bring that McLean girl back again? Did you date her? Yes. Good. She's got friends who have money. And she's got those dice, too. Hasn't she? I already told you. She, she's going to bring them back to me again tonight. We have a little rule, Richie. We don't take any work home. Listen, you little punk, you're out at prep school now. You're in the big town with grown men. What's the matter? What's happened? You tell me. There's a private copper walking around this town with those dice in his pocket asking questions about me. You'd better get them back, kid. Or I'll split that patent leather jar. Mr. Gordon, I did... Uh, yes, right in here, Mrs. Forbes. Oh, now don't let me disturb you. I was just... Why, Richie Locke, what in the world are you doing here? Oh, he just dropped in to donate some of his last night's winnings to our fund, Mrs. Well, that's very generous of you, Richie. But why don't you come back tonight and let us win it from you? What? Oh, oh, I came in to, to see if you had the statement ready. You see, the Fairlawn Children's Home is so excited about it, and I told them that I'd let them know today just how much to expect. Well, I was just going over the accountant's figures. I expect to have it in a few hours. Oh, splendid. Well, I, I've got to run along now, Mrs. Forbes. What in the world is happened to your forehead? Oh, I, uh, I ran into a squash racket. <laughs> <laughs> How virile. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Yes? Oh, yes. To you, Mrs. Forbes. Oh, thank you. Louise Forbes speaking. Oh, Margaret, how nice to hear your voice. Yes, it's so well modulated. <laughs> what? I said I have a friend who's just in town from... Fort Worth, Texas. 
Well, it works. That's in Texas, darling. Yes. He's disgustingly rich, and he'd like to come to one of your parties tonight. His name's Carhart. His name's Carhart. Any relation to the oil Carhart? Great aunt. But distantly. Oh, that's fine, Mrs. Forbes. Thanks a lot. Yes, I'll see you tonight. Goodbye. Well, you're all set. She's expecting you. I just wish I didn't have to go with Richie. These are his dice. I've got to make sure they get into the game. These are the ones they're expecting. Well, what are those? This is a pair of beauties. They defy the eye. They defy detection. These are the ones nobody's expecting. Six and ninety-one. Anybody think I can't make it? I do. You can't keep this up. <laughs> You're right. I ain't just point any more money doesn't come. How about you, honey? Don't you think it's about time I lost? Let's put it this way. I think it's about time the orphanage won. <laughs> Why didn't you let Mrs. Forbes worry about that, huh? You just worry about a little niner from Carolina. Nine, she the is. winner. He <laughs> did it. But, Mr. Thornton, I simply can't believe it. I'm sorry, Mrs. Forbes, but there are the figures. I've had our accountant double-check them to make sure. But I've been giving these little parties for a week now. And only $3,000 profit. I promised the Fairlawn Children's Home that we'd furnish a whole new wing. It's been disappointing, I know, but then there are expenses. The catering, rental of equipment, the dealer's salaries. And my 2%. I just can't understand it. So many people seem to be losing. Ah, but not to the bank. Your friends all like to side bet with each other. Only $3,000. Oh, I'll be so humiliated to announce a sum like that. Well, now we could continue the parties for another week. Do you think that would help? Yes. Provided you encourage more of your friends to participate. All right. I roll again. Don't surprise. What do you mean? Nothing. Only wouldn't it be a little embarrassing if you made another pass? Some of these people might begin to think you brought your own dice. Huh? Yeah. Maybe they would at that. Uh, you're shooting, sir. You're holding up the play. Oh, I've had enough luck for tonight. Your dice. Now, how about a drink? Have one? No, thanks. Uh, you shooting, miss? No, I'm just watching it. I'll give my turn to this gentleman here. Why, thank you, ma'am. Last few years, the only gambling I've done has been drilling for oil. But I guess I can remember how we used to play this game down in Texas. I'd like to use the same dice that other fellow was using. They seem to be working just right, okay? Why, certainly, sir. Can't have action without money. Do I just throw them anywhere? Uh, against the rail, sir, and please hurry. Uh, seven, uh, pay the line. And natural. Well, what do you know about that? Let a ride. You ever hear of Texas luck? Just bet that front line. I got a feeling I'm going to break this bank just like Jesse James. Uh, seven, uh, pay the line. Another natural. <laughs> if I wasn't from Texas, I wouldn't believe it myself. Let that ride do. Hold on. What's wrong with those dice? I don't know. They're, they're house dice, aren't they? Why, yes. And what could be wrong with them? Nothing. They're still shooting. And you better start ducking. <laughs> Seven, I'll pay the line. Seven, pay the line. Seven, the winner, pay the line. Seven, the winner, pay the line. Seven, the winner, pay the line. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, sir. My name's Thornton. I'm banking this game. Hiya, I'm Carhart. I'm breaking this game. Oh, Mrs. Forbes would like to see you, sir. The hostess? Sure, I'd like to thank her for all the fun I'm having. <laughs> 
I'll just cash in, son. Right into the study, sir. <laughs> But you said Mrs. Forbes wanted to see me. Oh, she had sort of a disappointment this evening. She's not feeling very well, so she's lying down for a while. This is between you and me, Barnett. I should have worn false whiskers. I know a store where you can buy some. So do you. You were around there today asking about dice. The guy who runs the joint sent your picture over. Are these the dice you were using? Don't point those at me, they're loaded. I know. And so is this. How much do you take us for, Charlie? Twenty-five five. Let's have it. This is going to the orphanage. And you're going to a hospital. And when you get out, if you get out, we're going to be kind of hard to reach. They'll find you. There's a warrant out for your arrest on a gambling charge. So I pay a fine, they put me out of business, I'll retire rich. Will you? You're out of town, I thought. Before pushing a Pachisi game into New York, you should have read the penal code. Maintaining a public nuisance. I can afford that, too. That's section 971, but can you afford section 995? What's that? It has to do with swindling. Roughly, it means that a friend of mine is calling the cops right now. Yeah? Yeah. So you'll be handy in the morning when the district attorney institutes a civil suit against you to recover three times what you took from those people out there. That's 995. Can you throw a higher number? Yeah. Lock the door, Charlie. <laughs> What are you doing, huh? Calling the police. Huh? Hey. Richie. What for? Wait a minute. What's this all about? Hello, police? Quiet. Quiet, everybody. I have an announcement to make. This is our last ticket chance party. Oh. Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. And the reason is this. Mr. Thornton brought an accountant to go over our books. A new accountant. A very nice Mr. Carhart from Texas. And he discovered that the Fairlawn Children's Home will get $55,000. Oh. <laughs> yes, that's all the money you lost. And hasn't it been fun? <laughs> There, that's all I can afford to pay you. Don't worry. Thornton paid my fee. What? Oh, well, you earned it. Well, not exactly earned it. Let's say I won it. Exciting case from the file I call Follow That Man.